I'd like to welcome Simon to the stage, if he could join me for a round of applause. Normally I've got a pretty loud speaking voice, so I'll try this for a little while. Hey, um, I think uh, my hope tonight is just to chat to you a little bit about Grilled and then tell you a little bit about my journey and, and where um, I've come from to get to where I'm at with Grilled. Um, passion is probably the thing that I think is most underrated when it comes to business and how people perceive business in Australia. Um, we all use a rational brain when we're thinking about decision making. And I think the, the success of what Grilled is to date is actually linked to an emotional brain, not a rational brain. So for me, whether Grilled succeeds or fails into the future, and hopefully it won't fail, of course, it's a thing in my life, apart from my two gorgeous daughters, that I'm most proud of. Um, starting a business and actually, um, I think, overcoming what I call the scourge of the middle class to do something on your own, to leave a good job, to actually have a profession and a career in front of you in a company that actually brings with it social cachet, those things, actually leaving them behind and starting something from scratch is the thing that I'm most proud of. Um, second to that is that I like the idea of actually being something that's unique, something that's being different, and being proud of what we create. So for those of you that you don't know, rationally, Grilled is positioned as the local healthy burger expert. So again, breaking that down, local, we want to make sure that we're actually integrating into the local community, not imposing ourselves upon it. Um, healthy burgers, well obviously that's our mantra. We need to make sure that health is considered broadly around nutrition and we need to make sure that we're legitimising what healthy means and being honest with what that is, honest in how we determine it, honest in how we communicate it. Um, and the expert piece, deliberately and proudly, we haven't changed our menu dramatically over the eight years. I know Kate said we've been operating for eight years. We try not to talk about that. We want to be a young, contemporary, irreverent brand. We want to be anti-establishment. We want to be a rebel with a cause. And sometimes you find that when people age, when they mature, they become a little bit more staid, a little bit more conservative. We need to make sure that are grilled that we don't become that. We want to make sure that we're a business that continuously pushes the edges. We're not going to be absolutely radical, but we need, need to keep evolving. Because pleasingly, we're in a space called category, a category called burgers that are actually almost a ubiquitous category. It's almost one of the most loved food groups in the world. And what we're doing, and why I think our business model works quite well, is that we're actually saying, you know what? We're giving people permission to shop that category again in a guilt-free, healthy and contemporary fashion. We're doing so with a welcoming environment and we're trying to deliver something more than a product and we're trying to deliver what we term the grilled experience. And I'll come back and talk about the grilled experience in a sec. For me, again, rational, we're a local healthy burger expert. Emotionally, what we're trying to deliver is nourishment. And nourishment, I guess, relates back to the grilled experience. It relates back to what we're trying to create as an in-restaurant enveloping, overarching concept. When you walk in, we want there to be layers. We want sound, smell, theatre, ambience, music, temperature, lighting, movement, service. All of those things compounded deliver power. And I think we're often taught in brand and in marketing the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. Well, I'd disagree with that vehemently. I'd say that the actual individual parts are what count. Because if you actually, um, if I walked you past with a blindfold, if I walked you past a, again, they're not at our competitors, but if I walked you past a Subway or a KFC, you'd know where you are because of that smell. If I actually said to a girl, I'm going to give you some jewellery, but it's going to come in a baby blue or a light blue box, you're going to know where it's going to come from, right? The moment you actually see that. If I actually um, was on the phone to you and you turned your computer on and you were using Windows, I'd know you're using that operating system because of the sound that it makes. So many little parts of a business or a brand are powerful and most of us forget to give those little parts credibility. In a business like Grilled, again, of which I'm very, very proud, it's not the strategic big decisions that count, it's the everyday little decisions that count. And for me, I'm super proud that we've actually got brand front and centre in everything that we do, and therefore all decisions go through a brand filter. Because you can dilute a business around the edges and it doesn't feel like you've done much damage, but at some point there's a tipping point, when you fall over that, you've damaged your business and your brand significantly and irreparably. 
So what I love and what, what's made Grilled interesting, I guess, and sometimes a little bit roguish, a little bit rebel with a cause, is that when we started this business, the burger category was busted. It was bastardised and it was actually dominated by only fast food. So those guys have amazing business models. I'm actually not critique, critiquing or criticising their business model, but in terms of what they're offering, they weren't offering something that was contemporary or relevant. So from our perspective, we felt that there was a great opportunity to say, that's fast food, what we are is not fast food. So we're over here. So we use them as a positioning tool only because the category is dominated by them and therefore that's how people perceive the category and therefore we use it to make sure that we're educating people so it's a quick guess. They go, oh, that's what that is, that's what grilled's not. So what are we? We're now 54 restaurants. We've been operating for eight years. Um, we'll have 70 restaurants or, or thereabouts by the end of the calendar year. 32 of our 54 restaurants are company owned. And what we're saying is that we need to put our money where our mouth is. So obviously starting with one restaurant in Hawthorne in 2004, and then we went down the road, Glenfrey Road, Malvern, and that was our second restaurant. Our fifth restaurant, which was High Point Shopping Centre, was our first shopping centre experience. It was the other side of the CBD, and if it had been our first, second or third restaurant, we would have been broke. So, guess what? The concept's the same. The only thing is that if we got our property piece wrong, we would have failed. So we're putting product on a pedestal and we want to be a, a, a food provider. We want to talk more about our product and we want to make that a hero. But in real terms, what, we're, what, what makes Grill different and what, what will make us sustainably unique is people. So people, product and property. And they're the three things that fundamentally drive our success. Get them right and we've got longevity. Get them wrong and we've got significant capital hurt and or, and so, and or significant you know, financial bleed. So I guess for me, um, you look at it and say, well, is our journey on the right path? Pleasingly it is, but people recognise businesses um, a long time after they've actually made them who they are and what they are. And, and from a grilled perspective, I guess you can take two, path, two paths in owning a business. You can take a path that's all about commercial su success, and some people do that fantastically well, and they, the individual and the business, are not linked. In the case of grilled, we've said that I'm not going to actually go out there and do mainstream advertising, therefore PR becomes more important, therefore word of mouth becomes more important, and I've become inextricably linked to the brand. So is that a bad thing? Well, no, it's not because it means that I want to be incredibly proud of what we do. I want to make sure that we don't do what every other food business in Australia has done. And what they do is they scale up and they dumb down. If you put food, burgers, franchising and chain into a sentence or a paragraph, it's an ugly, dumbed down, lowbrow business model, often, that you're talking about as it relates to the, the Australian consumer. Chains in Australia don't have cachet as it comes to food. Our job's to change that. Our job's to walk the path less travelled that actually says we will scale up and not dumb down. We will not lose our soul. We'll make sure that what we are is a branded business focused on people. Now, do we get the people bit right all the time? Absolutely not. But the power in our business is about when we get customers complimenting us or even actually criticising us. The compliments are, I love your product and the service was amazing. And the, the negative is, I love grilled, but you let me down. And, and the fact that we're getting so much feedback through that's emotional actually means that what we've done is we've touched people a little bit and we've created grilled ambassadors because they believe that we've got a social conscience, which I want to. They believe that we've got values in our business and those values are passion, leadership, ownership and trust. Values are talked about very readily, but to live and walk those values is actually the hard part, right? So for me, if I'm actually involved in the business and it actually is something that I'm proud of, I don't have an exit strategy and I want to be involved 10 years from now. The intent there is to make sure that it actually reflects me. And if it's reflecting me, I want us to be a bit rebellious. If it's reflecting me, I want us to actually have values that mean something, not to our consumers, but to our people. And retailers in Australia, you know, you read lots about what's happening in the retail landscape at the moment. The reason that um, a lot of them are failing is that they've never actually had a unique business model in the first place. They've actually had a business model that's based off something that's in the UK or something that's in the US. And what they haven't done, again, Australia's quite a tough market to do retail because our rents are high, our labour cost is high, our utilities are reasonably high. 
Um, the fact is that they've actually taken shortcuts. They've borrowed somebody else's business model so their product is not necessarily the hero. They haven't involved themselves in service and they've actually let themselves be repositioned or outpositioned by these international players that are coming into the marketplace. So for us, I think, you know, we've got to make sure that when we keep driving our business, we know that we are not a big business. We are a big, small business. And it's our restaurants and therefore our people that actually count. The support offer should be that. It should be about supporting the restaurants. And again, businesses get that round the wrong way. They think head office is where the business happens and, and retail stores or restaurants are actually the things that are just there to serve some sort of purpose to serve head office. Completely the wrong way to think about it. Our business managers, as we term them, are heroes. That's how we frame up the business and we try and make them the integral structure of what it then drives how we think about things. So I guess for me... The, the proudest moment I've had is actually starting the business. The second proudest moment I've had is actually having people come up to me, young guys that have worked for us whilst they're at university, and then come back and say, Crowey, thank you, mate, I want to have a coffee. I want to talk to you about the fact that I now perceive myself as a better leader. I now am rated by my peers as somebody with more leadership capability. Even at home, my mum's noticed a difference around how I operate and how I actually behave in the house. And these guys have said thank you because they've left university and they've got professional jobs, which is what they were aiming to do. So their journey wasn't grilled permanently, but our job is to make sure that we're helping those people along the way. If we can either provide them with life and or career experience, then we're making a difference. Then we have a purpose. Because selling burgers is one thing, but to be honest, it's not actually the thing that makes me tick. What I love is brand and what I love is people. So if you actually get somebody else to make sure that the product is good, if you've got the right people on board to actually focus on that who are hospo based, then you can play to your strengths. And I've got two, in fact I've got one business, uh, business partner now, I had two. Um, I had two that I chose right at the start, not for them being mates, albeit that they were. I chose them based on the skills that they could bring to the table to help me around where my deficiencies lie. And I think that's one of the things we often forget about in business. We often want to do business with friends because we think it mitigates the risk. But we often find people who are like-minded with us. And what I would argue is the success of a business relationship, the success of any relationship, is not the personality. It's the, it's the internal self. So there's an external self and there's an internal self. If I asked you to actually tell me, tell you about me, you know, ask you to comment on me, and without knowing me, straight away you'll go to what I'm wearing, what my, hair, what my, my height is, what my hair colour might be, and that's how you'll describe me. If I ask you to describe your best friend or your mother, you'll go straight to the inside. You'll talk about their, their, the fact that they might be loyal, that they might be of integrity, that they might be somebody who you can trust. And it's those things about our values that actually need to be considered when talking to people about doing business. It's those things that actually resonate longer and forever, not the personality traits. So if you are looking to actually have business friends, mentors, partners, make sure you're choosing them for the right reasons, not for reasons of friendship alone. I think the other thing I just wanted to touch on really briefly was um, culture and brand. I've talked a little bit about brand, but from a cultural perspective, brand and culture can't be bottom up. They must be top down. A glass ceiling is reached very, very quickly if you try and develop a brand or a culture and do so within the organisation and not have buy-in from the top. Because they're the two things that need to be actually central to a business success if it's retail focused or consumer focused. And in my mind, you know, our mission is to actually say, we need to make burgers good. We need to recognise that the grilled experience, which is unique, we hope, when it's on, it's really on. When it's there, it's almost intoxicating. The challenge is to do anything consistently and regularly, not just occasionally. So for us, the business model that's grilled, again, eight years down the path, it's no different to what we were doing fundamentally eight years ago. It's just that we've learned that strategy, structure and people are what we need to keep thinking about ahead of the growth curve. Because if you want to grow successfully and ensure that you don't dumb down, you don't dilute, you don't lose your soul, then you need to make sure that you're investing ahead of the curve. You need to make sure that you actually are growing into shoes that you're already wearing not changing shoes time and time again. And that means that people have to grow within your organisation. Because if you're only trying to bring in people from the outside, never can you have a brand, never can you have a culture that's sustainable. 
And in my mind, if you look at things like, if I said to you, by the way, I want you to work at a shoe business or I want you to work at a computer hardware and software business, neither of those things bring with them a lot of emotional connection. But if I said that you were going to work for Nike or you were going to work for Apple, then most of us have a very different opinion that's emotionally driven around what those brands stand for. Nike's about winning, it's about the athlete, it's about the individual, it's about technology. Apple, we obviously use them as, a, as an example of everything brilliant because they are. Um, you know, it's about technology, it's about design, it's about ergonomics. Believe it or not, as the biggest company in the world by market capitalization, it's actually about personalization, which is just phenomenal. Um, those are brands that aren't defined by their category. And if you're defined only by your category, then you have no long, longer term chance of success. Or in a downturn, you're only going to trend as per the category. So for, from a perspective that is brand, again, people talk about brand endlessly. People don't know what it means. But a perfect example, do not be defined by your category if you are a brand. Because if you do, then you're only as good as your competitor. And what you need to be is something that actually stands apart from the category in which you play. So the intent of Grilled and the hope that is Grilled is that we continue to do that. We continue to evolve. We started off in strips. We've moved to shopping centres. We've moved to CBD locations. We've actually gone from Victoria to Queensland to Sydney to WA. Just last week I was in Singapore. And I suppose also when you're in the, in the heat of battle and you're actually focused on a business day in, day out, you lose perspective. And it's only when you step back that you actually gain some sort of perspective. You know, are we doing a good job? Have I got my structure right? Is the strategy on, on, on track? And the, and the distance gives you a better perspective than you'll ever have when you're involved day to day. Now, you can't be separate from the business permanently, but the blend of both is what really counts. And, and I was flattered, and I guess I was very fortunate that um, I was in Singapore because Louis Vuitton, who actually has a private equity arm under their, under their umbrella, they are owners of Louis Vuitton, of Dior, of Bulgari, of Tag Watches, of a whole lot of different things. Um, they're looking and saying, geez, I like what Grilled's doing in Australia. I think that Australian heritage that is Grilled would play really well through Asia. And it's a shopping centre based environment. And they have amazing property portfolios. So whilst it's very unlikely we'll do a deal with them because that's not the intent. We want to grow organically. We want to make sure that we're actually walking and controlling our own future. The intent or the, the flattery that is somebody like that looking at Grilled, when we think of ourselves only as a small business that's trying to grow, they look at us from an outside perspective and say, that's a business that has global opportunities. So again, from small things, big things can grow. And for me, you know, Grilled was a stumbling block. I, I found Grilled in part deliberately, but the journey to Grilled, albeit we've been operating now for eight years, the journey to Grilled was actually 15 years before that. And it's always that I've wanted to have my own business. I knew that because that's what my dad did. He was a pharmacist. He was in the same pharmacy for 35 years. He retired about four or five years ago. And I didn't know anything else. So for me, it was always going to be about focusing on a consumer-driven brand. And by pure chance, I got picked up by Procter & Gamble after I, left Procter, uh, after I left university. And Procter & Gamble is a very well-regarded re US consumer goods company. So I was lost at university, hated it, didn't know what to do, was told to do science, was told to do well on that so I could transfer across to sports physio or physio so I could become a sports physiotherapist. Um, I missed out by one market, you know, what was then called VCE, and they said, yep, just do science and do really well. Well, I couldn't stand it. So I left university after two years, travelled overseas for six months. It was going to be 18 months, but then I actually read a lot when I was away. I travelled by myself, which was the best thing that I did, and I actually learned, hang on, it's time to apply yourself. It's time to actually realise if you don't know what you want to do, that's okay. If you don't know, you know, but what you do know is what you will never do. So for me, I guess the, the path that I've walked down has been somewhat fortunate. It's never been deliberate. But along the way, I've been able to say, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. And I've kept doors ajar and I've kept them open if I can. And inevitably, it comes back to people. Like I said, Grilled is about people. It's about my values, which I hope actually then translates into the business, passion, leadership, ownership and trust. And if you take no for an answer, you're going to get nowhere very fast. So I was lucky only that I didn't accept no 
through many steps, which was university and then Procter and Gamble and then steps from there into another business so I could work for a founder and then into Fosters and Fosters gave me the opportunity to work overseas for five years. In fact, I was overseas for about three of those years in the, in the US and traveling through the UK. So why I took that job was so I could look for business ideas to bring back to Australia from overseas. So nothing was ever planned deliberately but along the way, there was a stepping stone that said, that keeps my door open, that keeps my door open, and I never shut the doors that actually I thought were most important to my future, which was owning a business.